Hull Dockers clash in the final of the Amateur Rugby League National Cup. At the start, more than 200 teams from all over the country entered the competition, so for the finalists to both come from the Hull area is quite an achievement. Skirla are the underdogs, but after having beaten some top sides, they're getting quite used to being second favourites. We've been in underdogs in every round, so that's not a problem to us. We've got the greatest respect for the Dockers team, but oh, we, we're, we're confident. We've been training quite hard these last uh, few weeks. Skirla's opponents, Dockers, over the years have been one of the most successful sides in British Amateur Rugby League, and they're confident of being able to win their fourth trophy of the season. We've uh, already got the Yorkshire Cup, Yarrow Bank Cup, and the Council Cup under our belts, and uh, it's our third attempt at the National Cup, but uh, the previous two have been unsuccessful, and if we happen to be fortunate at five o'clock on Sunday, It'll be probably our best season since 1946 when we formed. Graham. And the final is being played at Nosey Road in St Helens on Sunday with kick-off scheduled at 3 o'clock. Welcome to Nosley Road St Helens for the 1992 BNFL National Cup Finals. Surprisingly to many, but not to all those on Humberside, this is a game between two sides from Hull. Hull Dockers in the famed green and hooped shirts and Skirlaw, a side that really has only been going about 10 years and is a bit of a surprise entity in the BNFL National Finals. 215 sides first came into this competition and we are now left here with the last two at Nosley Road. Unfortunately the travelling arrangements do seem to have hit the crowd a little bit but I do know they were talking of somewhere in the region of 17 coach loads of fans travelling down from Humberside to support these two sides here at Nosley Road this afternoon. At the moment the teams are uh, being presented to the dignitaries. One of them is uh, Mr Chris Harding, the chairman of BNFL, the sponsors of today's event. And with him is David Knight, the president of Barla. Behind him, Miss Lorraine Blundell, bringing a bit of glamour to the occasions. Miss Lorraine Blundell, the rugby league representative, the reigning Miss Rugby League, in fact. And behind him is the mayor of St Helens. So the dignitaries are uh, going along the line with the whole Dockers side at the moment. That gives me the opportunity to run through the teams. And we'll start off with Hull Dockers. Just quickly, for, for your information, at fullback is Ian Wadsworth. He replaces Lee Newton. Lee Newton breaking his leg just before the uh, semi-final date, so that's a big blow for him. Then Chris Lines is at number two. Three is Andy Blake. And four, Ian Walker, with Dave Cooper in at number five. The halfbacks, Sean Sorden and Stuart Farr. Stuart is a Yorkshire County representative and did have a spell with the Great Britain setup. Mark Youngs is at number eight. Mark Fowler, the captain at hooker, number nine. And David Rowe, the baller player of the year. Sure to see a lot of him here this afternoon. He is a tremendous player, 25 years old. A lot of professional clubs looking at him. Craig Sudderby at number 11. George Youngs, another man who was in the Baller International squad at 12, and Paul Quinney at 13. There's two substitutes, 14 is Andy Camis, and that's a bit of a surprise, because he's been having a great season at standoff for the Dockers, and 15 is Ian Faulkner. The Skirlaw lineup, Skirlaw playing in the black and gold, a very smart strip here. They're basically at full strength. The number one is Carl Wiles, two, Tony Gotts, the top try scoring winger there. Andy Mules, a player who scored over 1,100 points in eight years for score, a tremendous record. And then four, Graham Paddock, and five, Martin Critchley. The halfbacks, Wayne Jenkins, a former West Hall player, and Colin Brown, a young halfback with a great reputation and many say a great future. In the forwards, it's Ian Murray, Number nine is Neil Hinchcliffe, and ten, Ashley Simpson, in a strong-looking front row. Second row men, Steve McMillan and Steve Johnson, with Richard Gotts, the loose forward. Gavin Dooley is at 14, and Paul Walker, 15. And Paul Walker, incidentally, is the brother of uh, the uh, whole uh, Dockers player, 
of centre Ian Walker. So two brothers on opposing sides there. And in fact, there's three sets of brothers in these uh, two sides. George and Mark Youngs for the Dockers. And Tony and Richard Gotts for Skirlo. And as I say, Mark Roberts, second row. And uh, Steve Roberts is physio for Skirlo as well. Well, the two captains being called together by today's referee, who's Mr. Stephen Nicholson of uh, Cumbria. He's joined by uh, Red Touch judges Mr. Beach and uh, Mr. Lomas for two this afternoon's BNFL National Cup final. Looking at the two side seasons, well, it's Hull Dockers who are very much the uh, side that will be fancied for this game today. They've already won the Humberside League Championship as well as the Gyrobank and Council Cups. They've also got the Barlow Yorkshire Cup in the trophy cabinet. And they're looking to be a side that lands both that County Cup and the National Cup in the same season. The very first team that would be able to do that. But uh, Ducker's record in the finals, again, they've lost twice, including last year to Saddleworth Rangers. And in, uh, back in 1978, the only other time there was a whole, an all Humberside final, when they went down to Kaywoods, who are uh, now West Hull. But Skirlaw, ten years ago, firmed, worked their way through the divisions in the Humberside League, and the Humberside Premier Division champions just two years ago. Last year, they took the uh, Council and Gyrobank Cups, this year, this is the trophy they've set their hearts on. It's Skirlaw who are going to kick off, playing up what slight slope there is here at Nosley Road for the 1992 BNFL National Cup Final. And it's going to be Andy Moulds to get the game underway. And we're off. Taken by uh, George Youngs, the Dockers' second row forward, a good run. He'll be pleased with that in the opening stages. With Dave Rowe now, typical Rowe run. Characteristic from Rowe, that scrum cap. The only player on the Dockers' side. With Mark Fowler, the acting half, you can see he keeps getting around to play that position. We're looking to move it on that blind side. He uses the second row man, uh, Craig Sudderby. With the Dockers. Now they've drawn them in on the left. Can they move the cross? A long ball from Roll. But uh, good skirl of tackling. Denies any room at all for the scrum half, Stuart Farr. Little chip over the top from Roll and a chase. Three Dockers men chasing, but uh, the ball bouncing dead. Guided over by Carl Wiles, the fullback. So it's going to be a skirl or dropout on the 25. And it's a tap taken by Richard Gotts, 21 year old loose forward. And we've got Neil Hinchcliffe. Oh, that's a good break. That is a good break. From the second Roman, Steve McMullen. A Hinchcliffe. This time to Brown, a long ball, a good ball too, trying to put the wingman away, Martin Cripsy. Found the ball again, a little bit of a run around. Dummy's is loose for the gap, but there isn't a gap there, and he's taken out by Rowe and loose ball with uh, Paul Quinney. So it's Skirlaw. Well, the ball behind Richard Gorts, I'm sure the referee will wave play on. In fact, he has, it's picked up by standoff Wayne Jenkins. Jenkins to make it to, looking to make ground down the middle. Hinchcliffe again, this time to Gotts. Gotts kicks it and it hits a Dockers man. It must be Skirla's ball. No, the referee is going to six tackle, last tackle, he says. So you've got to get rid of this, Gotts. Down to the second row man, McMullen. But uh, six tackle, so it's going to be a handover. Row there, looking to take the ball. He'll play it. Taken by Quinney. Quinney out to... The standoff, Sean Sword, and it's a ray. It's George Youngs. Likes to run out wide. The fowler. Now across again. This is Sword. Row attacked in half. Moving it to his right. This time it's with Fowler. But fowler, the ball is a bit behind him. So he's ended up with support from Quinney. Row this time to far. Far slips it in to the big number eight. Then it's to Sorden. Sorden to Fowler. 
but uh, he's turned back inside as the number 11 sort of a but a well covered up in the end by Skirlan so the referee are judging a knock on and it's a docker's put in it's going to be Stuart Farr to feed the ball comes out uses sword and sword and drops the ball big disappointment there for the Dockers they would have been looking to make more from that attack a very promising position just 10 yards out so going to be scrum down this time it's going to be Skirlons Colin Brown to feed the ball and the ball comes out to Wayne Jenkins Jenkins of ages man well he's clear here Jenkins tremendous pace but gone back into trouble gets away from Youngswell moves it out to the right hand side where Graham Paddock's on a run but Paddock taken into touch and a good break a good setup from Skirlall but a tremendous cover from the Dockers players to get across and halt that attack so it's going to be a Dockers put in referee not happy with that one awards a penalty to the Dockers for not binding so he's caught the, the hooker Mark Fowler the captain of Docker so it's Roll kicks the ball gains about 20 yards and it's going to be on the 25 yard line a resumption with Fowler looks like Roll will be the first receiver yes he is he takes it in that little strength shimmy gets him a yard or so out Fowler again this time to far now with Quinny Quinny standing up but well met by uh, a number of school of tacklers Fowler back this time to Far. Far straightening up he's almost through he is through what a strong hand up and in support he's got number four and Ian Walker it's Ian Walker in for the first whole try what a superb little break from Stuart Far. Skirl will be very unhappy about that uh, defensive work there after just seven minutes play from that little break by Stu Farr and it's Rowe successfully puts over the conversion attempt to the score line Holdock of six Skirl and Hill here at Nosley Road in the BNFL National Cup Final So it's going to be Andy Mould oh, Andy Mould to actually resume play for Skirlow Hits it deep This time taken I think by uh, Craig Sudderby No in fact it's uh, Ian Wadsworth the full back He's got Youngs coming up, steaming up on that outside but in fact it's Fowler who goes down with it and then a penalty against Moulds for holding down at the tackle this gives Rowe the opportunity to gain some ground up the far touchline the weather today very hot indeed around about 80 degrees out on that park which you no know, doubt will take its toll later in the game but at the moment these two sets of sides looking to settle themselves down the score line reminder hold up a six skull a nil this is Roll takes in the ball driven back by some tremendous skull tackling so it's Fowler attacking her slips the ball back inside it's Lucy like it's Wadsworth it's a good run indeed nobody driving him back and again Skirla not letting him get up and play the ball in fact it was Sudderby a good strong run from Sudderby so that gives Rowe another opportunity to gain some yardage on that far side these two sides met five times already uh, this season Skirla have won two but the Dockers have won three and the three that have mattered because they're the ones with all the silverware in the cabinet a good drive from Mark Youngs now with Rowe a high tackle though from Richard Gotts and that's a penalty I'm sure it's one that uh, David Rowe is going to have a kick at 
In fact, he is. He's already got one goal, a conversion. This one very much in a kickable position for him. Quite a chunky uh, type of a player, David Rowe. 24 years old, 14 stone. They class him as a utility forward and uh, he's used that uh, ability to represent Humberside as well as uh, the auction in Great Britain. Strikes it well but it hits the post, bounces out. It's retaken by him though and it gives them the opportunity on this side. The ball out to Quinney. Well he couldn't quite get it out to the supporting uh, centre Andy Blake. But it's now with Fowler, back to Rowe. Rowe at the hub of everything at the moment. Little surprise he's uh, taking some of these balls. The referee not happy with that, he's given him offside against uh, Wayne Jenkins. He's pointing his touch, Judge. And, uh, well, Wayne Jenkins obviously said something that gives yet another opportunity for Hull Dockers to set up an attacking position. It's with Mark Youngs who was moving it back but uh, Roll puts it into touch. Mark Fowler resume play. Now with Quinney. Quinney takes it in. Tackled by Gotts. Fowler again. They've got Youngs coming. Well not at steam then. But he's screwed off two tackles. He's a strong lad is Mark Youngs. In fact it's George Youngs. Another ball to Fowler. To far. Doesn't quite get it back, but this is uh, Mark Youngs. He knows where the line is. He's going for it. He's in. What a try. Skirler won't be happy with that defence, but he went straight through them like a knife through. But a powerful run from this young player. A fine try. Well, it's David Rowe, the opportunity to put over his uh, second goal. Strikes this well. In fact, that one's going out the ground. Okay. So once more, the ball with the Dockers. Ian Wadsworth, the man there. Mark Fowler, Quinney, George Youngs. Farrell again, far, Quinney, oh this lad's going well, he's going well, I think it's Sorden, whoa, what a tackle, a bit of a shoulder but it's legal, now with far, far seeing the half gap, he's past one tackle, the duck is really buzzing here, that knows the road, only about 14 minutes of the first half gone, yet already leading by 12 points to nil, well released from Sudderby to Ian Walker, the scorer of that first try. And it's with uh, the fullback Wadsworth. Oh. Row, row a little kick behind the defence. George Youngs is powering in for that one. He's taking it. Well, the referee offside, but I think if we touch and go, there'll be one or two arguing that one in the whole Dockers camp. There's a certain reluctance on the Skirler part to make that ball their own. Dockers, as I said earlier, this is the third National Cup final. Yet to win it. They're looking to make it third time lucky. And the way they've started here this afternoon, leading by 12 points to nil, everything's looking pretty good for the uh, men in green at the moment. Skirler's possession been limited, partially through their own arrows. Well, a big drive that time from Ashley Simpson. Hinchcliffe again, this time to the other front row forward, Ian Murray. Hinchcliffe, dummy, to Gotts. Little from Brown, but uh, nothing to draw there for McMullen. Very young side, Skirler. Ball back, oh, but a good tackle from Young, from Youngs. So it's the Dockers once more in possession. Farrelah. A dummy by Sudderby. Sudderby been quite prominent in this opening uh, 15 minutes or so. 
Farrell again in good yardage. So if he attacked in half, he's got a nice deep line both sides. Alex to use his left, gives it too far, far past his first tackler as it has been most of the afternoon. Farrell hinting to his left, he uses Sudovy there, wide ball out to Ian Walker. Obstruction though, runs behind three of the Hull player, of the uh, Skir Dockers players. So the referee, Steve Nicholson, awarding a penalty to Skirlaw. At the moment, the Skirlaw player is very much in need of a lift, trailing by 12 points to nil. Not the type of start you want in a national final especially against the side that they've rapidly come to associate as their most uh, difficult opponents in that homicide league but it's now with Hinchcliffe to Simpson oh but uh, let's that down the referee is let play on well bit of surprise but it's Richard Gotts who takes it on the blind Hinchcliffe he's got Ian Murray with him referee not happy with that holding down he's awarded a penalty so it's now Mulls who's going over to that side he's going to try and gain a little bit of precious ground and put Skull on what would really be the first attack of the afternoon This time it's Murray who takes the drive. About eight yards from the Dockers line. Hinchcliffe to Simpson. It's a big lamp. Hinchcliffe again. This time to Brown doing the run across looking for somebody coming on but nobody for the drop off. And it's well taken out by Quinney. Brown now plays it but he's going on his own Hinchcliffe. He's looking for those posts. Sheer weight of numbers drag him down with Brown, with Gotts, there's a gap but uh, George Young spots him, drags him to the floor Hinchcliffe, this time Brown, a little chip it's hit by one of the Dockers players, it's loose and uh, no knock on, the ball came off Quinn's foot it's George Young sweeping up as the ball tried to be brought away by Ian Wadsworth what a good run, this is a good run from Mark Fowler, gets it inside to his head, now to the wingman, has he got the legs, he must have the legs here, Chris Lines going down the right hand side, he's going to score, and he does. Well, an excellent try from the Dockers, a length of the field try, it all started with a good break from acting halfback by the captain and hooker Mark Fowler, he took the ball, up to about 10 yards from halfway, fed it to the centre Andy Blake, then Andy Blake passed it on to the wingman Chris Lines, and Chris Lines went 50 yards down this touchline, nobody to beat, Skirler had all been brought caught up trying to make the attack when the ball went loose, and a marvellous try for Hulldockers Nice and and it moves to kick off again for Skirlaw. Just 20 minutes of the game gone, just halfway through the first half, and already Dockers leading by 16 points to nil. A marvellous start for them at Nosley Road in this BNFL national final. Dockers have actually managed to score 190 points on their way to this final in just six matches and conceded only 53. It's Mark Fowler taking that ball well, little kick, he's got the support too. He's got George Youngs now, he can motor. Is he going to make it? Well, he just got his ankles ticked by Tony Gotts, but Huldockers in full flight here. Oh, but what a what a time to lose the ball <laughs> four players outside of him and uh, Stuart Farr well he loses the ground in disgust that was an opportunity however there was one for the Dockers but it's the Skirlaw on the rack once more trailing by 16 points to nil 
penalty though to score law gives uh, Andy Moles an opportunity to relieve some of the pressure here well, this powerful Dockers forward line the Mark Fowler right at the hub of it at the moment and Dave Rowe they're causing all sorts of problems for Skirlaw but it's going to be Hinchcliffe Neil Hinchcliffe to resume play with a tap penalty I see it's the second row Steve McMullen gains about 10 yards now with Simpson powerful forward on the line to Brown Richard Goss, Richard Goss is through the gap looking for the support it was good cover from the Dockers but the referee is going to have a word with somebody well, obviously didn't like what he saw in the tackle as he has a word with uh, Mark Youngs but it does give Scurler the opportunity to open their account Andy Moles, the centre for Scurler 27 years old, 5 foot 8 and 11 stone 5 pounds prolific point scorer amassed over 1100 points and he holds a record of 24 points in a game apparently also a good uh, golfer as well as captain in Scurlaw cricket team so Andy a big favourite in the village of Scurlaw He strikes it well, and it's two points. Skirla are on the board. Scoreline, Dockers 16, Skirla 2, and the BNFL National Cup Final. Far resumes play. It's taken by Ian Murray. But Simpson knocks on. Well, all that hard work goes to waste. Well taken by Ian Murray. Referee not happy with that. And this does give Dave Rowe the opportunity to pull back that 16 points lead. It's more or less right in front of the post. Dave Rowe landed just two from four attempts at goal this afternoon with a sand on the pitch the Barlow player of the area and that for his performances for Yorkshire as well as for the Great Britain side who played against France Great Britain are well beaten on the day but David Rowe showering himself with glory for the marvellous performance that won him the man of the match and for his efforts the Barlow player of the year strikes it well it hits the post well, that's the second one that's hits the post and this two is gathered by Sean Sorden so that's two out of five hit the post two gone over but now roll out to far far's got Sudderby inside the ball knocked down it's well picked up by Brown inch quick attacked in half looking for somebody to run at the ball and it's McMullen Got big support with them today, Skirlaw. But it's got puts in a deep ball, trying to catch out Wadsworth, but Wadsworth had fallen back for it. He takes it well. Everybody's on side. Tony got tackled. Along with Andy Moods. There's Andy Blake making a good bit of yardage as his forwards reform. Mark Fowler out to Sorden. Sorden to Murray. Murray to Sudderby but forward just as well too because Sudderby managed to get through on that one there's going to be a substitution though on this girl aside they're going to bring on number 14 Gavin Dooley in the place 
Well, they don't seem to have made their mind up yet. It looks like uh, Neil Hinchcliffe. No, he's going back. Well, <laughs> a little bit of a mix-up there. Who exactly was coming off? It's Wayne Jenkins didn't look too happy about being replaced at that stage. But uh, Gavin Dooley, the man now on. George Young's running on that far side. Gavin Dooley is a hooker, so he's gone hooking. And uh, that means that Neil Hinchcliffe has gone to scrum half. Touch George on though here. He's calling out the yeah. so penalty to hold Dockers. So ball out of the ground. Fowler to take. The top penalty as play resumes. Approaching the first half hour, score line Hull Dockers 16, score 2, the NFL National Final. Referee not happy with that one either. A bit of an elbow usage he's saying from Dooley. Now with Quinney. Gets past his first tackle and really that's been the feature of the game, Skirlo not getting in with those first tackles, no withdrawal gets past his first one, just his second almost in for a try just inches short Fowler, well it's an interception but he couldn't take it well that nearly set something up there, if Colin Brown had taken that, could he have gone the length of the field well it's all hypothetical of course but it does mean a scrum down and it does mean that it's Hull Docker's possession So far, puts the ball out, out with Sorden. Is he going on his own, he's past one, he just loses his foot, his footing, so brought down to the ground, but they're always getting past that first one. Quinny now, eventually brought down by sheer weight of numbers. Blake, knocked on by far. One the two handling errors creeping into the game. Very hot out there this afternoon, around about 80 degrees. Some of the big lads like this one, Ashley Simpson, could find themselves struggling a little bit later on. This is Ian Murray, he's running well. He's had quite a good game for school, or perhaps the most effective front forward. Now we've got, got a bit of a playmaker, obviously. Steps ball up, takes it up to halfway line. Dooley, Tinchcliffe, do the run around to Mules. Mules had his eye on the uh, oncoming defenders and it went that Quinney could pick it up. Now with Murray, now with Rowe. Fowler, Sorden and across to Sudderby. A bit high but he shrugs it off. He's managed to make the ball available. He's got walking support but he straightens up. Dockers on the attack again. Sorden, a good tackle by Dooley. Quite so, but he manages to get out of it. Very strong competitors, the Dockers side. So it's with Walker. Out to far, far back again, looking to release Youngs, but well met by Simpson and Murray. Rowe going to go on his own, who can he? It's with Youngs. The ball goes to ground. Eventually it's picked up, covered up. By, I think it's Hinchcliffe comes up with the ball it's going to be a scrum down it's going to be a skirl or put in because it was a Dockers knock on but the Dockers very much on attack here we've not really seen one attack worthy of the name from Skirl or just once and then Dockers broke the length of the field so it's Mould's attempt to actually gain ground on this near side Skirl or struggling up this hill at the moment 32 minutes of the first half gone Scoreline, Dockers 16, Skirla 2. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
much good ground. A lot of these touch finders from a place kick these days, supposedly to reduce the element of risk. But it's Simpson takes it in, knocks off the first defender, and eventually a good run that's well supported by the school of France here. Now with Dooley, now to Murray. Two hookers though here, Dooley and Hinchcliffe. Outside of him is Gotts. Richard Gotts. Who's to give it out to Brown? Brown has to step inside Quinny. Gotts takes the return. But no forward drive. They don't seem to have the men like uh, George Young splitting them in that wide, out wide. Good kick though from Brown. Wadsworth lets it run dead, which it does. So it's going to be resumption on the 25 for Hull Dockers. Mould's going to attempt to put yet two more points on the board for Skirlow. He's certainly kickable for a man of his record. A penalty for Dave Rowe, not playing the ball correctly to himself. Andy Mould, he strikes it well, and it's a good goal. About 35 yards. That makes the scoreline Dockers 16, Skirlow 4. With about seven minutes to go to half-time. Well, the Dockers, uh, two tries, or three tries on the board, in fact, and threatened a lot more, but only win leading by 12 points here on a very hot afternoon at Knowsley Road. So, it's with the wingman, Martin Cripsy. That's McMullen. Good tackle, bringing him to her. Simpson now taking on the drive. Pass Sudderby. Oh, or is he? No, Sudderby hanging on for dear life. Now with Brown. Brown, dummies, loops to straighten up, but he's taken out by Rowe. Dooley at acting half. Very flat line this side. Gots the kick. Wadsworth, equal to it, takes the ball. Everybody on side. Moore Moulds tackles him with a little bit of help from Tony Gotts. So it's Chris Lyons at acting half, a scorer of the third Dockers try. Now it roll. Good forward, taking the ball up. Fowler at acting half to Farr. Quinny, he's worked hard, the Dockers. Much deeper line though in the Dockers set up. Fowler. That's the Ian Walker. He scored the first try here this afternoon for the Dockers. Now oh, Fowler. Far, far to try and gain ground. Carl Wiles. The Skirla fullback. An awkward bounce for him, but he takes it. Everybody's on side. He's going to try and make ground, but met by Ian Walker. Now Brown acting half back, there's the first tackler, gets what was really an ambitious pass and it's a knock on. So it's going to be a scum down and a put into the Dockers. 16 points to four, but four minutes to half time, first half of the BNFL National Cup final. Dockers well on top really I'd have to say. Ball one with Far to Blake. Back inside, a hint of forward pass, and the referee on the spot. He agrees. It's going to be a scrum down. Skull are put in. Well, that was an elemental mistake. I think Doc is perhaps feeling they're well on top here, can move the ball a little bit. They should have kept in play. The ball swung round. It's going to be a reformed scrum. Put it. 
Hinchcliffe to Mould. Not really seeing anything on attack. Just to kick two goals. Hinchcliffe acting hard to Brown. This time he's got McMullen. McMullen looking again, Brown. Not a big lad, but certainly putting a lot of effort in. Now with Brown again. He's been very prominent. A bit of a dummy. A nice ball released on the far side. But couldn't get Graham Paddock away. No Brown again. Hinchcliffe. Richard got. He's looking to find space there. Pass Sorden. Releases Graham Paddock. Paddock inside to, to uh, Crispy. But that last pass again. Too hurried. Desperation, I suppose, though, when you're trailing by 16 points to four. Half time approaching. But a nice bit of approach play from Skirlo. In fact, possibly the best attack they've put together the afternoon. But no, it's Dockers with Mark Young. It's foul. No to roll. Rowe's got people outside of him. Has sword and manages to slip it up nicely for Rowe. Rowe to Youngs. Well, was that one forward? The referee certainly thinks so. I think maybe I would have let that one go. Certainly good attacking play. I like to get together there in the middle of that park. Rowe, sword and far. And then Youngs is not far behind George Youngs. No Brown though, electing to switch sides. Brings in the fullback Wiles. A good tackle, a very good tackle, drives him into touch. That was a good tackle. Is in uh, Walker who made that tackle? So scrum down, Docker's ball, brings in the wingman. Dave Cooper. We've not actually seen a lot of Dave this uh, first half. Play a bit more towards the other side. But Quinny, it's to Sudderby. Looking to release that ball. Gets it to ground. It's kicked on by Fowler. There's going to be a knock on there. And indeed there is. back the referee says she's just as well that allow Hinchcliffe with his shit over his head <laughs> well <laughs> a good run for the lad Brown forward pass no he's not seen it Simpson's through that was a good half break no got well, this is certainly giving Skirler something to cheer. By my reckoning, we're into injury half time in this first half. There won't be much of that added on. Good ball to Moulds. Moulds can't go through. He just holds on to the ball. Brown working this blind side again. Perhaps should have gone the other way. Not a good kick for him, but well cleared up by Wadsworth. So it's going to be a dropout from underneath the post. Well, Brown certainly at the hub of every uh, skill or attack. He's trying everything he knows, trying to work the blind side a little bit there, but didn't uh, work out for him. So be Dave Rowe to resume play. To injury time in this first half. You see, high one, it bounces back and it's picked up by Sudderby. You've got to tell you those first time, now you get found out. Fowler from acting half. An invaluable contribution from him this first half. Row attacking half this time. Scott Fardy will go on his own. They know that there's only seconds left in this first half. He gets up. Fowler. It's time to sword and to far. Far's almost through. Half time though. And the score line here at Nosey Road. A good first half. Hold up a 16. Skirl off four.
Welcome back. Norsley Road kicks off to the second half of the BNFL National Final. Just one substitution on the Dockers side at half time number 14 Andy Camis comes on to the field of play playing looks like he's actually playing in the centre for Andy Blake but we'll get that confirmed for you later but the half time score pulled up is 16 a score of 4 and it's Scurla down the hill this time the sun gone in a little bit that'll make things a little bit cooler because it was certainly very hot in both sense of the words for Scurla in that first half taken by uh, Wadsworth slips the ball to Quinney as Dockers attempt to launch another attack Smith Rowe shrugs off a couple of tacklers he's having a big game his role wouldn't be surprised if he's not one of the leading candidates for the rugby league sports riders Wilkinson's man of sword that goes to the man of the match here this afternoon so it's now a sort of it another half player who's been promised in the first half far but Sordon loses the ball far sweeps up but the referees giving the knock on so give us an opportunity to see exactly where Adney Cam is, is slotting in and yes he has come on in fight for Andy Blake So it's now with Skirlaw. They're going to run the ball away. Steve Johnson. Cooley, now to Simpson. A big strong running forward. Take down Dooley, working this by side. Ian Murray had a big game, I think, for Skirlaw. Worked very hard the first 40 minutes. He's been the liveliest and most inventive of Skirlaw's attackers. Sets the ball out to this uh, right hand to Martin Critchfield. Critchfield kicks inside, Wilkins slips. That gives him the opportunity, but he gets up, recovers well. He's now got to run on that far side. And clears well after losing his footing with that kick from Martin Cripsy. Youngs, George Youngs. Tackled by Richard Goss. This is the first chance for Andy Camis. He turns the ball back inside where he's got Mark Fowler in support for a refines George Young's. Young's still got the ball available, or did have. Camis normally a half back, doesn't mind operating in the centre. Now with Sorn, a good long ball out of the side to Ian Walker. Ian Walker stepped inside his man. He's got Brown going all ways. Eventually, this Graham Paddock gets back to bring him to a. But it's with the Wiles. Ball moving across the line. Far tackled with Roll. Roll looking for the drop goal. Slots it home. <laughs> no, no goal, says the referee. Well, looked very close indeed, but no goal. Had quite a record for scoring in any manner he can. As Dave Rowe in the semi final that they beat Crossfields 15 13. He scored all 15 points with two tries, four goals. Uh, three goals and a drop goal, so a tremendous scoring achievement from him. Put the ball with Skirlaw. It's McMullen. He's got the half cut. But, uh, tackled by Fowler. So Dooley. Brown back inside to Simpson. Simpson looking for support, but the quite third tier is not there. So it's Hinchcliffe again to Brown. Brown to Johnson. Johnson's half clear, but George Young's his opposite number pulls him to the ground. So Hinchcliffe again with Richard Gott. So a little kick over the top. He's got pace, this lad. Doesn't quite take it. And in the end, it's Andy Camis who covers up for the Dockers. Well, the Dockers coming back a little bit slowly. Very demanding first half. They did nearly all the attacking. Five minutes into the second half. Referee Steve Nicholson's had quite a good game so far. 
not happy with that tackle a little bit high he's going to have a word with Ashley Simpson so it's going to be a roll to gain ground on that far side which he does Fowler Sudderby coming up Sudderby drives it in Fowler Cam is coming in this time he's going to move it out to roll Roll looking for somebody on support, he's almost through the gap, in fact he is through the gap, he's got Thomas back now to Quinny. This is good stuff. A tremendous break. Camis acting half this time, to far, to Sordon, doesn't make it, not picked up by Walker. Well, you've got to say there was a chance gone missing there for the Dockers. The four men outside of far but his long ball wasn't taken by any of them I think a skirl a hand got in somewhere that's why we've got a scrum down that is in fact being put in by far picked up by Quinney referee in the way it's going to be a scrum down again Dockers leading by 16 points to four three tries against two penalties side so it gives Andy Mills an opportunity to gain yardage up this side for Skirla so Skirla resume play Gavin Dooley Ashley Simpson takes in, powerful drive, well met by Fowler Rowe and Walker. This time it's Murray, Ian Murray, well met by uh, Mick George. Somebody's lost the boot. And in fact it's uh, George. It's Youngs. So Gotts running into trouble. the line, short ball to Brown good pass out the back but couldn't be taken by Brown and eventually cleared up for the Dockers so it's Camis, going for back in half almost past the halfway line brought down by Brown Rowe he's got Quinny up the right side takes it on his own, slips the ball out the back to Camis and to Far is George Youngs good driving run from him this is an international squadman earlier this season didn't quite make the final cut now with Camis to Sudderby Camis even though he's playing centre very much involved now in the middle of the park the second half substitute that's uh, Stuart Farr now with Sordon tries a kick it's picked up by Richard Gotts referee has given offside against Gotts it seems to be hit Dooley's hand so it's Dave Rowe two goals out of five attempts this afternoon Looks like he's going to make a, an attempt at goal here. In the meantime, Skirwell attempting to bring on a substitute. And it's number 15, Paul Walker, replacing number 9, Neil Hinchcliffe. <laughs> Neil Hinchcliffe uh, been oper operating at Scrum Half since. Uh, 30 minutes into the match now replaced by Paul Walker and that sets up the interesting confrontation between Paul Walker of Skirla, the substitute and Ian Walker, a try scoring centre for the Dockers but Rowe on his fifth attempt at goal this one pulled wide so so far two out of six for David Rowe so it's going to be Mills to resume 
play with the dropout. In comes the Dave Cooper, takes the ball, and Mark Roberts and Paul Walker straight into the action. So do they. Misses out, finds it Wadsworth, forward pass, goes to ground, not taken, so it's going to be a scrum down on that far side, and a score wall put in. Skirl are quite some interesting uh, victories on the way to this final. Beat Park Amateurs at home, 26-18. Then that uh, saddle with away, and that was a very good win. But it's Skirl with the ball. Moving it to his right, got. Now can they do something on this near side? He's got the gap there as the full back. He's got to go around his opposite number, but a good tackle by Wordsworth. A break by Carl Wiles. But Skirlaw have got to get something moving here. Now to Brown, a long ball. There's plenty out, but one long ball, two minutes. But taken indeed by Tony Gotts. Well, he scored plenty of tries this season. But two passes cut out a lot of men they should have used. Another long ball goes to ground. Very difficult balls to take. Missing out too many men. It's a shame Skirlaw really needed a try then to pull themselves back into the heat of this game, trailing by 16 points to 4 still plenty of time of course for them or indeed the Dockers to get more points on the board Some jovial comments from the crowd Frankie Barrow and Mike McLennan. Tono with Row. Row drives the ball in hard. Good yard, it is clear. Okay. Oh, what a pace he's showing. He knows he's got Mark Fowler with him. He's looking on this far side, but his central wing one at 30 yards behind. And then he gets it to Ian Walker. Well, caught everybody by surprise, including his own teammates. David Roy, what a marvellous break it was from him. So, Docker's on attack, no to roll. To far, got Sorden on the short ball, he's still the first one in, he looks like he's heading for that line, but a good tackle from Carl Wiles. Fowler, to roll, to far, something on here, it is for Sudderby. Well, can he make it, can he make it, he has done. Well, three men outside of him, Sudderby. A nice try. Well worked in the end. Initially all set up by a fine break from Dave Rowe. Nobody in support. But from the resultant play of the ball, when Walker was tackled, they moved the ball along the line. And it ended up with Sudderby being put in for a try from Stuart Farr. Monroe makes no mistake with that one to move the score on to uh, Hull Dockers 22, score 4 in the BNFL National Open Age Final. That's Mark Youngs, takes the ball with his foot, finally regathers it, tackled by Dooley. Dockers shouting out the orders. For about 15 minutes of the second half, Hull Dockers 22, scale of 4. George Youngs had a big game this afternoon. Dockers. Barley Yorkshire Cup winners, Humberside League champions and Gyro Bank and Council Cup winners. Four pieces of silver on the mantelpiece. Now a great break by Stuart Farr, chased by Tony Brown. Brown eventually gets him. Now with Roll, sword and straightening up. Looking to release the door, ball out the back door, but nobody there. Fowler, Quinney with him. This is Camis coming in. A long ball out to Walker. 
that releases Walker a bit he stood up in the tackle throws it back inside Quinney then Youngs knock on or forward pass or even a touch of uh, offside the referee elects that it's a uh, knock on it's going to be Colin Brown to feed the ball in comes Martin Cripsen I'm going to want for him to do this afternoon but it's Brown moves it out to a paddock a bad pass not well taken by Moulds either fact it's a lost ball puts the Dockers on the attack once more somebody's injured here so it's going to play the ball again it looks like it's Moulds Andy Moulds scorer of both the Skirla penalties trainers on Oh, took a bit of a knock there as he tried to gather that ball from Graham Paddock not a good ball thrown out a bit in front of him he tried to take it, lost it and of course as he's concentrating on that in come the tacklers or the players chasing the ball and you get caught out it's coming around a little bit it does give the opportunity though to uh, just reflect to what I was saying earlier girl or some great victories on the way to this final Pete Park Amateurs and Saddleworth and Dalton away Egremont at home Walnut Warriors and in the semi Bilton Mysons having scored 129 points and 78 against a good record one that of course doesn't count for much when you get into the final but does indicate there's plenty of scoring potential but it's now with the Dockers Craig Sudderby who's had a fine game in the second row must be a candidate for man of the match I would think now Fowler a stepping run on Youngs how Dave Rowe looking turns it back inside to far but forward pass well he makes that ball available he's looking terrific player Dave Rowe Must be the lad who really, I suppose, is out in front. Only just though from one or two others for the Man of the Match award. Oh, Colin Brown brings it away for Skirlaw. He's got uh, Wiles in support, but uh, it was Dave Cooper who got in sharpish to prevent him getting the ball away. Now Paul Walker. Good drive on this near side. Tackled by his brother, Ian Walker. McMullen, he's running hard firing excess of his weight Brown Gotts he managed to evade the first tackle but moving up very quick indeed the Dockers catching making skill or just trying to avoid the tackles rather than to release the ball it's back inside it's McMullen again still a bit too flat that's probably I think they've had most of the afternoon Brown a chip over the top that's off at all on is it well the referee will give a knock on I think on that one off Sudderby just which way he'll give it though Skirla put in yes Skirla desperately wants to try on the board 20 minutes of the second half gone trailing by 22 points to 4 Paddock can't get round to Walker <laughs> Mike Mullen taking it up again met by uh, Rowe and Mark Youngs Brown's got Ian Murray had a good, a good first half and a bit quiet to the second <laughs> Dooley Brown Dummies loops with somebody coming through it's uh, Johnson dueling out to Simpson Simpson to Richard Goss like a bullet and it's picked up by Fowler but is he knocked on in the process or does he give the first knock on yes so it's Hull Dockers put the ball in 
Stuart Farr the feed Head to Sorden he's got Wadsworth coming on the outside no one picked him up either a good run from him Antinar Sorden to Quinny Quinn is straightening, he's gaining good yardage here. Ian Walker, Sean Sorden outside of him. A deep line, a nice deep line. Here's Mark Fowler, Fowler straightens up. He can't get it over the back, he gets it to Sudderby. Sudderby for that corner, but slips and loses footing, and with it loses that particular opportunity for the Dockers to score. But they've got a nice line here now with Roll out to Sorden, to Far, short ball to Dave Cooper. Cooper driven back by a fine tackle by Simpson. Is it? And a drop goal attempt from Far, and a successful drop goal attempt. Well, when you get that close, you might as well take the one point as go back empty-handed. Scoreline, hold up is 23, score a four. Well, Hull Dockers impressively taking a stranglehold on this game. The big forwards making good ground and very inventive halfbacks dominating the middle of the park. This lad's had a good game too, Paul Quinney. Gets the ball out to Sorden. Sorden's people outside him, but he elects just to steady it down. Let's get formed up and ready to go back, he must be saying. Mark Fowler goes on his own. He had Rowe as an option, but uh, thought one or two were looking for that. So Rowe, he'll go on his own. Well, that was straight past Gotts. And look what yardage he's made to Fowler, who's supporting him. No far. Here comes Youngs. He loses the ball. So it's picked up. By Murray. Brown looking on his own, playing a bit of a lone furrow there, nobody with him. Gets the ball out eventually to Cripsy, to Dooley. Dooley's just going to drive it up. Wiles to McMullen. He's worked hard, this lad has. Hard luck, it's all on though. If Wiles can take that, he might yet score. Oh, he throws the ball out to Gotts, and Gotts is not there. Well, that's twice we've seen that happen, both sides. Players making a break, and then finding the supporter yards behind, because they've taken them by surprise. For the moment, two school of players being treated for injuries. But Carl Wiles on the far side, near the 10 yards from the line, and we've also got on this side, I think it's Gavin Dooley, who's receiving a bit of treatment. So at the moment, school are only 11 players set up the ball with the Dockers Richard Gotts is going to be penalised for a high tackle referee having a word with him at the same time a Dockers player who's down with cramp so at the moment the train has been kept fully occupied Wiles is being dragged to his feet Dooley looks to be being in fact it's uh, not Dooley it's Steve McMullen Looks like he's in two his shoulder a bit. He's put a lot of work in this afternoon, lightweight forward. In the meantime, Rowe takes the penalty kick. What if that uh, alleged high tackle by Richard Gotts on Stuart Farr? So it's going to be Andy Camis to resume play as Carl Wiles finds his way back. Taken in by Mark Youngs. Good team though, Dockers playing very well indeed here this afternoon. Relentlessly going forward. That's Dave Rowe. Not giving school a minute. Well, the touch judge is on. He's seen something in that tackle that he didn't like. Could well be in Murray in for a little bit of a verbal lashing from the referee Steve Nicholson, and it is. Well, Skirl have been hard pressed all afternoon to contain the running of Dave Rowe. Well organised side indeed, the Dockers, Skirl Young team struggling on this occasion to contain them. And it gives 
they roll another opportunity to have a kick at goal three successes out of uh, seven so far this afternoon this is his eighth attempt and in the meantime they're also making a change they're bringing on Ian Fortner Bringing on Ian Faulkner for it looks in fact like it's Sean Sorden or is it no in fact it's uh, Mark Youngs who's come off so Rowe holds that one wide Scoreline still then, Holdacos 23, Scala 4 in the BNFL National Cup Final. Zoom play. It's all getting a little bit heated here. The number 12 Steve Johnson has scored, has come off as well. And that's enabled number nine Neil Hinchcliffe to get back on the park. Dockers leading 23 points to four. Ian Walker professing his innocence. But it's Gavin Dooley. Paul Walker takes up the ball. And offside against the Dockers. So this is going to give Dooley another opportunity to launch an attack. And it's Simpson cut. No, they've missed that one. But it's Murray looking to straighten up. Can he make the line? Well, three green shirted Dockers pull him to the ground. Dooley out in half. Brown loops to dummy with Hinchcliffe. Then the long ball to Gotts. But as Gotts takes it, already Camis was on him. Puts that out the back door. Wales loses his footing. Hinchcliffe again this time to Gotts, to Moulds. Moulds gets it out to Tony Gotts. He kicks, but it's far too long. Well, that's uh, been Skirla's best attacking spell of the second half. They've been under the pressure from the Dockers for most of this game. That was an opportunity, perhaps, that they will feel wasted. In the end, it looks like that ball actually came off a Dockers player, so it's going to be a dropout from under the post, which is Rowe to drop the ball deep taken by Wiles eventually perhaps no it's Brown he slips it to Wiles Wiles so Luke can take the ball back just gets over halfway the dummy run to Brown this time to uh, Ian Walker substitute forward this time Brown again back inside to Richard Gotts this is the break he wanted this is to Paddock. Paddock. Oh, nice ball from Paddock to Cripsy. Cripsy going for the line. Now with Dooley. Tinch clear. Gotts misses them out. Finds Wiley. Campbell's put in Tony Gotts. No, not quite. Oh, they're giving the ball some air to try and breach this Dockers defence. Brown. He's the man who looks most likely to cause or create an opening than any other man. But it's back to Richard Gotts. To Mike Mullen. Mike Mullen slipped through. He's in. Well, the end of a player does deserve a try this afternoon. It's that lad. Only 19 years of age and 5 foot 10. He says he's 13 stone, 5 pound in the programme, he doesn't look quite that. But a tremendous young player, captain Humberside, Yorkshire and Great Britain under 19s. Certainly want to watch the future, work very, very hard on defence. Took the ball up well, so a good try indeed. Well, 10 minutes of this game to go. It's been a very hot afternoon, in more ways than one. But Camis quickly spotting, nobody on this far side. And puts the ball into touch. And McMullen getting a bit of an earful from scrum half Colin Brown for not being in that position at that time. 
Well, if you look on the faces of these players, you can see all the effort they put in this afternoon. They work really hard. Tremendous heat. Now with Brown. Cripsy. Into the tank, acting half, using Ian Walker. Ian Faulkner brings him down the substitute for Dockers. That's Ashley Simpson, well tackled by Sean Sorden and Dave Rowe. Back with Richard Gotts, and the ball goes to ground. One or two too many of those type of mistakes made, I would imagine, for Skirlaw's uh, happiness this afternoon. They'll be a little bit disappointed about that. So far puts the ball in, Camus is going to come round to make the extra man, slips it to Sorden, forward to Paps, no to Wadsworth, no to Dave Cooper, Cooper's still got the ball available. Wadsworth there, moves it out to Sorden, Sorden straightening up, looking for a half gap, decides just to dig it in, knocks off a couple of players, strong player Sean Sorden. Mark Fowler, George Youngs. Now Fowler, row again. To Qu Quinney, he's going for the line. Oh, what an opportunity! Well, Paul, Ian Faulkner, he'll be disappointed he didn't take that ball off Paul Quinney. Because the try line was very much at his mercy there. But it's Skirler now on the attack again. Richard Gotts taking that ball. Dooley to Ian Walk to Paul Walker, the brother of Ian Walker, the Dockers centre. Dooley to Brown. Simpson. Powerful run. High tackle. Well the referee's not tolerated anything like that all afternoon. He did penalise Skull as Richard Gotts a little bit earlier. He's done the same again, so I suppose you can say that at least he's been consistent. So it's Andy Mould's opportunity to try and gain ground again for Skirlaw. Six minutes of the game remaining. School line, Hill Dockers 23, Skirlaw 8. He's not thrown in touch with that one though, he's going to be taken by Dave Rowe. Powerful run by George Youngs. He's a big lad. Rono, Son, Quinny. Camus acting half, so to be on that blind. He's had a good game. Can't quite get the ball out though. In comes Faulkner. Here Faulkner, past two tackles. Almost past the third. A good driving run from the substitute forward. Camis is the first receiver. Dummies goes past one. He's managed to get out of that tackle. He's looking for the support now. But a good deep line from the Dockers. To Rowe. Rowe so far. Far misses out and gives it to Youngs and it's a walk-in. It is. Well, that try, so simple, so easy. George Young's highly delighted with it. Far and row, the combination. The long ball, Young's juggled with it, and then went in for the try. But Dockers leading 27 points to eight, four minutes of this final going. Surely now, you've got to say that that cup is at last on its way into the trophy cabinet. After two previous attempts have failed. The Dockers certainly felt that their experience last year would stand them in good stead this time out. Perhaps one or two might decide that exactly the way it's gone. They settled much quicker and played the normal game. One or two too many drop goals, drop balls for the Skirla side. And the ball straight through, the referee will say let's take that one again and he does. Oh, 
Sides with Brown. It's Luke Niguan is on. He's had a very good game. Gotts puts a long wall out to Wiles and again gone to ground, but the referee says take that back. Too many of the passes just fallen that half a foot short. But Gotts going on his own from acting half. Slips it out this time to Paddock. Paddock's got Cripsy with him. Paddock kicks. It's not going to be taken eventually. Well, the man of the match just been announced, Dave Rowe. As we said, he's had a tremendous game here this afternoon. Kicked three goals, but been in the heart of everything that the Dockers have tried on. No, just taking the ball in, very timely of him. Typical yardage game by him, and marvellous performance. Pushed close, I think, by Craig Sudderby. George Young's the man with the ball too, he's had a good game. But it's Rowe who's been inventing everything. Stuart Farr, Sean Sordon played well as well for the Dockers. The only lads that really perhaps could have even threatened, I would have thought, on Skirlaw because they're so well beaten side at this time, is young Colin Brown. Tried everything he's known. Ian Murray in the front row perhaps. And uh, their try scorer, Steve McMullen. Skirlaw bringing the ball away, looking for a more consolation try with Brown. Looking for the half gap. Not got past his opposite number, Stuart Farr. Andy Moulds. Andy Moulds going straight down the middle of the park. He'll kick over, he'll chase, he's not obstructed. It's a run. Will the base of the ball favour him or Sudderby? In the end, it's Sudderby who has to kick there dead. So it's going to be a dropout from under the post. Both teams very slow to come back. The heat this afternoon at Nosley Road has been truly exhausting, not only for them but for everybody here. So it's going to be Rowe to drop out from one of the posts. We're in the last minute of the game. It's a long, deep kick taken by Carl Wiles. Wiles runs it back in. He doesn't evade Rowe or Faulkner. Hinchcliffe from acting half. He's looking for those little gaps around right there. But Quinn is in it. Quinn is, makes the tackle. Stooley. Can Skirla get a consolation try here? Can this lad get one? He deserves one. Good tackle by Wadsworth. Richard Gotts knocks on another ball round the ankles. And there goes the final whistle. Hull Dockers, the BNFL National Cup winners for 1992. They've beaten Skirla by 27 points to 8. Dave Rowe the front row forward, the baller player of the year is also now a judge, the BNFL National Cup man of the match a marvellous performance from the Dockers they've dominated this game throughout they had a spell when they were 12 nil up for about 10 minutes when Skirla looked like they might pull something back, but in the end it was the Dockers who took control they led 16-4 at half time and then the second half went on to make that scoreline of Holdockers 27, Skirlaw 8. presentation being made to the referee and touch judges, referee Steve Nicholson, touch judges Jackie Beach and Bill Lomas. Steve Nicholson had a very good game here this afternoon, I think he'll be quite pleased with that. Then it looks like it's going to be the beaten finalists, Skirlaw, they're being led up by number two, Tony Gotts, the captain, presented to to Christopher Harding then it's Ian Murray Graham Paddock looks like Ian Walker Ashley Simpson Johnson Carl Wiles 
Neil Hinchcliffe. Colin Brown, very good game he's had this afternoon. And the uh, Wayne Jenkins. The Squirrel Law players giving everything they've got, but on the day, very much second best. And now it's going to be the winning uh, team. And Mark Fowler, the winning captain from Holdockers, followed by Craig Sudderby, then Andy Camis, and tremendous performance, Stuart Farr, Sean Sorden. Uh, their supporters very happy with that one. They take the cut from Sir Christopher Harding of BNFL, ably assisted by Mr. Bollinger, Lorraine Grundle. And David Knight, the president of Bar. The fifth piece of silverware to go on the Dockers' sideboard this season. They add that to the Barley Yorkshire Cup, the Humberside League Championship, the Gyra Bank Trophy, and the Council Cup, which are the two big cups in Humberside. They've absolutely dominated rugby on Humberside. And now they've shown by beating Skirla and winning their way to the final of the BNFL show, NFL National Cup but they are the top side in the British amateur game final score Old Dockers 27 Skirla 8 